And welcome back, Martin Falls here, and I'm joined now by the Commissioner of Insurance for the state of Louisiana, Mr. Jim Donlin. You saw him on HTV last week. And Mr. Donlin, so good to have you back. How are you, sir? I'm fine, Martin, and glad to be with you again. Good. I've had so many, and, and I know you're right in the thick of it, and that's part of what an insurance commissioner does, but in my travels along the Bayou Roads on location, I'm hearing just so many people very discouraged uh, by the fact that their insurance either hasn't paid or the adjuster hasn't come out to see them. Now, there's a lot of companies that have gotten checks to people, so I don't want to throw everybody in the same group, but I do feel like it's still a majority of people that have not been taken care of. And just to start the conversation, what are you hearing as the insurance commissioner on this front? No question about it. And evidence of the fact that it is quite the challenge. Uh, we have registered and are licensed 7,000 additional insurance adjusters to come to Louisiana to do business since Hurricane Ida. Uh, the companies that have in-house adjusters, the big national companies, they can send them uh, quickly down to our state uh, in the aftermath of Laura last year and uh, now this year, Hurricane Ida, but they have to register with us the name and the information where that individual is licensed elsewhere. If they have a uh, residential license in another state, about half the states register license insurance adjusters like we do, another half do not. Uh, so uh, the, the, we, we, the bottom line is we have an army of about 7,000 additional uh, licensed or registered insurance adjusters uh, as a result of Ida working in our state. Now, many of them are housed, if you will, 100 miles away um, in Alexandria or in uh, Mobile or Houston, commuting to and from our state because of the lack of hotel rooms available. And of course, that slows the process uh, down as well uh, as a result of the travel time involved. So the most often heard complaint is just that, that our adjuster, although the company has assigned an adjuster to us for our claim, has not been out or they came out, they haven't submitted uh, their recommendation, their report uh, to us uh, to review, to see if we agree with it or not. Uh, that is the most uh, common complaint that we're hearing now. Later on, it will be about the failure to pay in a timely fashion. Let but we're not that. quite there yet. Let me ask you, I saw say a 31-year veteran. He's retired now from the insurance company, but he was a high-ranking member of one of the larger insurance companies. And I saw him on Facebook yesterday actually complaining about the company he used to work for, saying that for an insurance company not to send a qualified adjuster to someone's home is breaking the law. What, what kind of parameters do you think he was getting at? Not quite sure. Uh, there is no law that defines what the qualifications are. Uh, in our state, they have to be licensed or registered if they're being sent in from out of state. Um, but um, what he was referring to as not qualified, uh, I have no way of determining uh, without talking to the individual himself, which I'd be happy to do if you can refer him to me uh, here at the department. Uh, we can be reached at 800-259-5300 uh, for that purpose or any other purpose. Let me ask you this question. I'll give, get a couple of people sent me uh, responses because I wanted to have a conversation with you. And if we can't finish in this segment, we'll bring it to the next one. It says, hey, Martin, I need to move out of my house per the water mitigation company I hired. I have loss of use on my policy. I cannot get my insurance carrier to respond back to me explaining the process. The water mitigation company is waiting for me to move out so they can begin demolition. And they put, can Mr. Donlin please advise how I should move forward? Well, I, I would tell that individual to go ahead and move out. 
um, and document the fact that it had to be done in order for him to comply with the requirement contained in his policy that he minimize the damage to his property. That's in the interest of the company, of the insurance company, because the more damage you have caused by Hurricane Ida, the greater the payment they're going to owe to you for the repair of that. If they let it fester and mold grow up the wall, uh, that just adds to the expense that um, that the policyholder has. And if if that doesn't if that doesn't satisfy his need, um, maybe he needs uh, he can't afford to move out without some advance of, of money toward his claim, have him contact us and file a complaint against his company for not having acted promptly enough to adjust his, his claim at least partially in order to enable him uh, to move out of the home to begin the mitigation process uh, with that mitigation company that's waiting for him to, uh, to get out of the way uh, so that they can do what they need to do. I, I want to ask you, Mr. Donlin, if I could, uh, there's new quotes coming out, and one uh, lady asked me to ask you this. Martin, can you ask him why the new quotes for flood insurance have quadrupled in price? Well, actually, flood insurance is not a, a, an insurance product. It's a FEMA product called the National Flood Insurance Program. And the risk is borne by the federal government. So they make the rules. They, they put in place the criteria by which their premiums will be set. Um, in the past, it has been based primarily on elevation, on certified levees that provide protection uh, to the greater New Orleans area, the four parish area living within the levee system of Plaquemines, St. Bernard, Orleans, and Jefferson. Um, $15 billion was spent in the aftermath of the failure of those levies in 2005 with, with Katrina. Uh, and when finished with that upgrade and certified as meeting the requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program, many, 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 uh, if not most, of the policyholders living in that four parish area saw a decrease in their premiums. But the national FEMA announced actually two years ago uh, that they were going to change the method by which they price their, their policies and the coverage they offer. They were going to, they, they call the new system uh, risk rating 2.0, and it's a new basis for setting premiums uh, based on um, issues not previously included in their criteria. Uh, and the prediction is that for most folks, it will be either no change or a minimum change, $20 or less per month in an increase. But for a significant number, I think the estimate is that it'll be in the range of 3% of the policyholders. In our state, that's 500,000 policies in place. So 3% would be 15,000 policies. Those 15,000 policyholders will see a dramatic and significant rate increase under the proposed risk rating 2.0. However, at this point, we're approaching the end of this month, and the latest temporary uh, extension of the program included um, a move toward risk rating 2.0, but the proposed go forward on a temporary basis of one more addition an additional year, uh, not a five-year long-term extension, that would come with a suspension, a temporary suspension of the implementation of risk rating 2.0. At least that's the plan that is being talked about most as the uh, extension plan that will be passed on a bipartisan basis um, here before the end of this month. Uh, I hope that turns out to be the case. It also contains, um, the long-term proposal contains a cap on future rate increases, which for the past six years have been capped at 16, uh, at 18% per year. Um, the proposed ex long-term extension comes with a cap for the next five years 
uh, when, when implemented, when passed, of uh, somewhere in the 8, 9, 10, 11% per year uh, uh, level. So again, I don't regulate the National Flood Insurance Program. It's called insurance. It really isn't. It's a FEMA program administered by insurance agents, insurance adjusters, insurance companies that do the back office work, but take on none of the risk uh, for, for the losses incurred by that program. All right, we have about two minutes left on this segment. We'll definitely come back, but let me see if I can get this one in. I've, I've heard so much from some agents and they, they talking about takeout companies, and I don't know what that has to do with the debacle we're in or if it's a, a plus or a minus or whatever. Explain the takeout companies and how does that all uh, calculate itself into what's happening now in Louisiana? Really doesn't impact anything at all. Takeout company is generally the phrase used to refer to the small regional companies that have come to our state, a record number, 30 since Katrina, uh, doing business in, in coastal states primarily, primarily, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, South Carolina, et cetera. And they take policies out um, from the market of last resort, which is priced higher than any of the private sector in the area that the property is located in. It is a state-sponsored market of last resort, the risk of which is borne by all of us policyholders statewide, and that residual market has to, by law, provide coverage for those who can't get coverage in the private sector. These small companies take policies out of citizens once a year in, uh, in an effort to get more, more business uh, on their books. Let me ask you, Mr. Jim, if I could, because some of the agents we've known for years, I mean, on a personal level and on my family level, on listening to everybody in town. Matter of fact, agents have been calling me every day. They're pulling their hair out because they've promised the consumer a service and they told them they would take care of them and they intend to do it, but they're running into trouble from some of the people that they shopped out the policies to. I guess we've seen this before, but have we ever seen it in the magnitude that we've seen it? Was Katrina maybe one that would compare? Well, actually not. Uh, Katrina, at the time it hit our state, um, our residual market of, of citizens was actually our third largest insurer. It had 10% of all the property insurance in the state of Louisiana, behind only State Farm and Allstate. Uh, we began takeout when Governor Blanco made $100 million available in incentive money to get companies to come take policies out of citizens. We wanted and did depopulate that, that book of business to reduce the risk on everyone else that is behind those policies and to offer cheaper alternatives for perhaps better coverage than citizens offers to those who were having a difficult time getting insurance in the private sector. We were very, very successful in doing so. When Katrina hit, there were 173,000 policies in citizens' book of business. Today, there's 35,000. What was 10% of our market is now one half of 1%. I was asked in an interview earlier today if there would be another assessment necessary uh, in the aftermath of these Laura last year, Delta and Zeta, and now Ida this year? And the answer is absolutely not. Citizens is an efficient, professionally run operation now that can afford with its reinsurance to pay all of its obligations and not have to assess anyone. We still have five more years of assessments on policyholders, all policyholders, in order to finish paying off the billion dollar bond issue that citizens had to issue in the aftermath of Katrina and Rita because of their losses, which they couldn't afford to pay at that time. So those quote takeout companies are small regional companies reinsured up to their chin by the international reinsurance marketplace, enabling them to do business in highly risky areas like coastal Louisiana, uh, where they have displaced that market of last resort 
that was actually dysfunctional when Katrina hit 16 years ago. Here's what scares me, because like I said, I'm on the street and I'm talking to people that live paycheck to paycheck. That's, it, it's reality. And they haven't heard from an adjuster or they've been contacted early and haven't heard for weeks. They're desperate. Uh, they're depressed. They don't know what to do. As a commissioner, is there anything or any time limit that you mandate or you could tell a justice, look, you have to provide them in a certain amount of time so they can live. They can't go get bank loans even on these uh, situations. Is there a mandate you could do or what advice would you have for people like this? There is no mandate for an additional 30 days. But in the meantime, what they can do, and my advice to them, is to file a complaint against their company and, and get that process started. When a complaint is filed, we write to their company and they don't like to hear from us. We're like the Better Business Bureau for every other business. When a co an insurance company that we regulate hears from their regulator that holds the ability to take their license away, they, are, they get uncomfortable. So file a complaint with us. Do not hesitate to do it. It can affect your premium. It can affect your claim. And we will get them to give an explanation as to why they are not acting in a more responsible way, a more prompt um, uh, way to their policyholder. In addition to that, whatever money they get on the initial payment, generally called the depreciation payment of 10% or 20% of their total claim, take it, spend it toward the rebuild of their property. And if necessary, file a supplemental claim for any previously unknown damage that they discovered while repairing or for the increased cost of supplies and labor driven by the pandemic last year that had a real spike upward in the cost of lumber, for example, or in the, the uh, cost of labor. So call us, file a complaint, 800-259-5300, or go to our website, www.ldi, Louisiana Department of Insurance, ldi.la.gov, 800-259-5300. Mr. Dolan, I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your, your effort. And I may call you again next week because I'm, I'm out Let's on the streets it. and I'm, I'm getting so many people asking me questions and I probably could do a lot more, but I know you're, you're very valuable to a lot of people. So I appreciate the transparency and I may come back to you because I may have a whole uh, list of questions, but I like the fact, could you give the number one more time that if somebody's watching sure. and they want to file that? 800-259-5300. Let's do it. All right, Mr. Donlin, thank you so much for your time and we appreciate it today. Thank you. All right, there you have it. Mr. Jim Donlin, the Commissioner of Insurance here in Louisiana. We appreciate his time. And, and folks, you've seen me out there in the reports and you've also been answering me on Facebook. Don't be scared to send in your questions because you, you can tell he's, he's uh, intellectual about this, he knows his stuff, and just ask the question, he'll give you a straight answer and we appreciate his time. And if there's something we failed to ask that you wanna know, hey, go on my Facebook, HTV Facebook page and let us know what that question is and we'll get back to him on it. So thank you for joining us. And we'll be back with more segments right after this.